It's not very good. Uh, but this is going to give us a little bit more control. We can actually interact with this as the observer or as the hosting, serving, providing observable to pass what we want to it. Let's go in here. Something else may not be completely necessary, but I do often. Just create an actual flag so I know if it has the capture or not. So we're going to go ahead and subscribe to it. We're going to take that data out of it. We're going to take our name cache. We're going to go ahead and just pass that data through to it. Alright, so now we've set up the behavior subject. Uh, we have a flag to know whether it's actually initialized with the API data or not. Uh, we're going to go ahead and initialize that. And then down here in the update names, we're going to take the new name. Now this is, you don't always want to broadcast it uh, in this. I would probably like, tell the server to update it and then update the components. That way I don't have to make you get request to already know the data. I've already updated it for the actual spa. So we're going to take the change name cache, and we're going to next hit the new names, and that will go ahead and propagate that out. So everything that's subscribed to that cache to name call, notice that I'm hiding it with an observable. Uh, you don't want to actually take your behavior subject and just throw it out of your service and let people do whatever you want to it. It's always suggested that you mask it behind an observable. That way nobody can next to it outside of your service. Um, but now I can actually next to it inside of my service without having to actually resubscribe to it or redo anything special. So now we got our, our name list again. We applied it to list one, and then we're going to go ahead and save it. It'll re-admit it back down through the tree just like it did its initial API call, and it'll populate both lists on save. So there's a few other things we can do. Um, there were some buttons in there. Uh, we actually use observables to tame elements. So there's a lot of you know functions, and you can pass functions into elements and click events, and specifically with combo boxes in Angular 2, you kind of get access directly to every key that they press. So that's not always ideal. Um, so when working with page elements, HTML inputs, and components, you can pass an event to a subject and then have that subject, and then you can leverage RxJS to actually manipulate that, that event if you want. Uh, doing this allows you to use RxJS to react to the events using the RxJS operators. Uh, a big one that we use all the time is to debounce. Uh, if you're doing a type of head list, you don't really want to hit the server with search requests every time somebody presses the button. You kind of want to give a three or four second delay to make sure that everything's finished and they're done typing before you do the admission. So here we've got a direct one-way binding element. Uh, everything I press is going to show up in the output. No matter what it is, as soon as I do it, it immediately changes the object. Alright, so direct input change, nothing special. Um, if you look at 
The front end is literally the key up event, calls that function, passes the value from the key, everything looks fine. But maybe we want a little more control over it. So we're going to go ahead and create a one-way binding observable. I, as a practice, as a team, we avoid two-way binding at all, all at all costs. It kind of really helps enforce an immutability to everything. So we actually use two-way binding for almost everything. Uh, so we'll have inputs and outputs. So just like this, uh, we're going to go ahead and set up a dirty flag so that we can see that it's actually working and that the bounce is actually going on, waiting for it to finish. I'll actually admit the live stream texting, so you can see that also, and then we'll have results of the actual search results from the API call. There you go. I'm going to cheat. To do this, I'm just going to use a plain subject. Uh, there's a big debate in the Angular 2 RxJS community as to whether subjects are bad, whether subjects are good. Um, I see the point of having an observable that is not a subject uh, because you can actually control the, the teardown of it and you actually have a little bit more control of what's going on. Um, a subject, if something happens on the page and it was to get a completion, it, it would be done. Or if it had an error, it would be done and it would actually break the page. Um, but as far as what and where I'm using them. Oftentimes I find out that it's an event from a text box normally isn't going to break the subject. Um, so it, they're, I feel like they're kind of safe in this solution. Uh, also, you don't really know, it, they're hard to set up and tear down when you're waiting on events like this. It's a lot better if you use the subject and let the text box actually admit to the subject for you. So in order to do these guys uh, in the ng-on init, we're going to go ahead and subscribe to that stream that we just created, that I just created up here, this uh, observable change subject. So I'm going to ng-on init, and then we're going to go ahead and subscribe to that subject. So there's another operator that we haven't touched on. It's the do operator. Uh, it is standard practice inside of RxJS when working with observables to not nest your subscriptions inside of other subscriptions. So if you were making multiple API calls or you wanted to do other things, you would try to do those in a do or you would try to actually do it in a merge map or a switch map like I'm doing here below. But you don't ever want to subscribe it in. If it's data that each changed as a side effect to you getting data, the uh, example is the dirty flag. I don't really need any data. I don't really care what's being passed through. I just want to go ahead and tell my, my form that it's dirty or for this that bit that it's dirty. I can go ahead and tell it there. Uh, the debounce time is another thing that is inside of RxJS that we use a lot. That's just going to wait until we're done typing for two seconds before it continues from the debounce. Uh, switch map is what we're using to do the actual search. So we're inside of a stream, we're already subscribed to the stream. We don't really want to subscribe again inside that stream, inside of that stream. So we're going to use a switch map. Uh, what a switch map is going to do is I'm going to return an observable from the name search call. That's going to take the observable that it got in and just switch it out with a new one and then admit it. That way when we subscribe to the very bottom, it's actually going to subscribe to the one we're emitting out of the search map for us, so we don't have to nest the subscriptions down inside. Uh, and then on subscribe, the, since we're using the switch map, the search results are going to come back. We're going to set them so they'll display on the page, and we're going to turn the dirty flag back off. Right, so this guy is still pain. And then this one, notice it's dirty, but it's not actually emitting any values. Uh, but if I go ahead and give it its debounce period, it's going to go ahead and dirty, undirty, and then we go ahead and get our search results from the server. That was maybe a little fast. Anybody have any questions over that one? No. All right, so that's about it since I promised. Uh, we're going to look at some unit tests or unit testing. Uh, we use a lot of 
subjects for our unit tests, um, since we can go ahead and admit to them and respond to them inside. Um, this is just the setup before each. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create the subjects, pass them into the actual service page component. Uh, that way we can, you know, you, you sign on spies to see if it was called, when it was called, your basic search stuff. Um, so here is the actual test. It's going to go ahead and make sure that our service is, is getting up to date. So there's a problem on this page. Who sees it? There's actually, this is actually a false positive test. There's a $25 gift card for the first person that answers it. <laughs> Pulls your competitor the same value as they expect. Exactly. Amazon or Applebee's? Amazon. That's kind of a big <laughs> Yeah, I was like, come on, everybody knows this. But uh, this was actually something that we found in our code base. And I caught it actually in code review. And put it on here, and Jamie's really lucky he didn't come today because he was pretty mad that I used it to give out gift cards. But <laughs> the gift cards are from Renovo. They gave him the pass out, said do something creative. That's creative. I was going to pretend like I have demos, but I don't. Um, that's nobody cares about unit testing. Jeff, if I can interrupt there, um, Renovo wanted to sponsor. Like, hey, you know, can we help sponsor the events? Um, the meetup the site costs like 150 bucks a year. There's other types of things that we have minor costs to. So people over time say, hey, we have a sponsor. Um, well, the company Brandon works with wanted to cover the dues. That was really great for me because he and I were splitting that. So saved me some money. And uh, Robert Half, uh, Mark's like, yeah, we'll get appetizers. So well, I covered that. Um, so if anyone has any other ideas that a company wants to give money to this cause, uh, I don't want any of it. But we can do things like this. I don't know had a great idea. Let's just do trivia with gift cards. So, right. Anything like that as well. So, we got one more. I've got a $25 Applebee's gift card. Um, who knows what NPM stands for? No package manager? No. <laughs> That's it. Uh, there's a whole theory behind that. We'll get into that. But no, it does not stand for no package manager. Anybody else? All right, you guys can use Google, figure it out. See who's fastest at using their phone. National <laughs> Prosthetic Museum? Just as a key, if you go to NPM's website, it's probably not going to help you much. No one last in the but I can throw out stuff like that. <laughs> Gotta make it work for the 25 bucks. National Association of Pastors and Musicians. <laughs> <laughs> NPM is not an acronym? Exactly. NPM is not an acronym. <laughs> NPM actually published on their Twitter feed that everybody guessing that it was no package manager is NPM is not an acronym. So then they said, well, why isn't it called? N P Y A A or whatever, and their response was because it's not an acronym. Stop it. My theory is that it was Node Package Manager, and Node told them to knock it off. So now it's not an acronym. They never changed the name. Um, but that is the story behind NPM. <laughs> we have less than tech, aren't we? You gotta want it. Hey, again. John, Brandon, thank you guys. Um, teammates at Renovo actually went through it and made sure I didn't have poor grammar and spell everything wrong. Um, I'm sure we missed some for developers, and that's what we do. Any questions? Uh, my email, Twitter, I'm almost never on it. And all this will be up on my GitHub if you want to take a look at it. Um, I'll eventually put the slides on there and export them out. Uh, but that's it. To the walk.
Good job.